Hi, welcome to Beyond Politics. I'm Catherine Clark. Manitoba Liberal MP Kevin Lamoureux was swept up in Trudeau mania at the age of six or seven. That passion for politics has followed him through his entire life. In fact, he left a career in the military to run provincially. And in 2010, he fulfilled a lifelong dream to secure a seat in the House of Commons when he did so in a by-election. Kevin Lamoureux joins me now to talk about his life beyond politics. Kevin Lamoureux, welcome to Beyond Politics. What a pleasure to have you here. It's great to be with you, Kevin. Uh, thank you very much. Well, it's just great. And tell me, you were were you born and raised in Winnipeg? Uh, born in St. Boniface, which is, of course, is yes. Winnipeg, and uh, had my early childhood there. A little departure to Saskatchewan for right. a few years, and then went back uh, to Winnipeg. Okay. So really, it's been a pretty consistent place. Uh, it's been your community for a, Absolutely. a long I'm a, time. I'm a true prairie boy who uh, loves his city. Uh, Winnipeg's a, a great city. Yeah. And, uh, I'm very glad to, to have had my younger years there. Tell me a little bit um, about the adjustment that it's been for you uh, as an MP uh, to have lived in one place for such a significant amount of time, and now you're you're traveling back and forth to this new city pretty much every week. Yeah. You know, I don't mind the air ride. Uh, the, when you're on a plane, the nice thing is we have laptops nowadays. Sure. So you can pop up the laptop, and uh, what it really does is it provides me quiet time. Right. Uh, so I can just focus on what it is I really have to do. Okay. Often I'll write stories because I write for a paper, and uh, it's a great opportunity. And periodically now on the airplanes, they have those little movies that you can watch mm -hmm. also. So uh, we've got it pretty, pretty easy. The flying is, is not that bad. How long is your flight? A two and a half hour flight. Okay, so it's it's a it's a decent chunk of time without being too long and. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. You know, I was a provincial politician before, mm -hmm. and there are provincial politicians that take longer to go from the Manitoba legislature uh, to their home right. than it does for me to go from Ottawa uh, to Winnipeg. Sure. You know, if it would have been the turn of a century or fifty or sixty years ago, it might have been different. Yeah. But uh, nowadays, uh, it's really not that bad. Yeah. Uh, what's the last movie you watched? Good question. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm not a, I, people, and I'll say I don't know. It was just last night. You know, a movie comes in and a movie goes. <laughs> yeah. And I try to remember certain <laughs> points of the movie. Uh, I think we're watching uh, Prison Break. Okay. Uh, which is kind of an interesting uh, show. Yeah. Kind of like a 40-minute show. Does that feel kind of like you're every day on the hill? Uh, I'm just not. <laughs> <laughs> Good analogy, you know. Uh, well, you're, you, you know, it's the type of thing in which I, I do enjoy watching a, a good movie. I guess the last time I, I really enjoyed a movie uh, would have been something like uh, Ghostbusters. Oh, my uh, gosh. Which, that was a really, really goes, long time ago. That, you're right. It was a long time ago, but it was a good movie. Yes, it was a great <laughs> you know, movie. There, there's others. Like, I, I, I'm really fond of documentaries or bios like uh, Mahatma Gandhi, mm -hmm. uh, the movie there. Uh, there's some really good movies, and, and I do enjoy it. Just terrible at remembering the titles. Yeah, no, that's 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 fine, and you'll have a lot on your plate. That uh, yeah, that was a trick that question. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. So uh, tell me about growing up in mm -hmm. Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. You, um, how big is your family? I have uh, actually six brothers and sisters. Wow. Uh, yes, it's uh, well, it's the '60s. You know, sure. they, they had more children yeah. back then. <laughs> Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, it was a great childhood. I right. have nothing to complain. You know, my, my father was a very much a hard worker, mm -hmm. a morning till night type of thing. Uh, my mother is the one that really provided care for us. Right. Uh, at least uh, until I was, you know, 16 type of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we had, uh, it was nice having the number of siblings that you have. Uh, you know, I got to argue a lot at the okay, kitchen table, ask, which is really got, helpful, right. you know, arguing Good from the kitchen. Good preparation. Absolutely. <laughs> Highly recommended. You know, arguing from the kitchen table to yep. arguing in the House of Commons. Right. It's kind of a natural flow, and it's really helped out. Did you have discussions around your kitchen table then that um, encompassed more than just, you know, so-and-so stole my whatever, piece of clothing, truck, uh, homework today, or did you, did you talk about things about the greater community around you or about the global community at your table? Surprisingly not. Even though it's a large family by yeah. today's standards, 
uh, no one was really interested in politics outside of myself. Right. Um, you know, we would talk about what you know kids would normally talk about. Sure. Me, 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 and me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or you know, pass pass the food, or yeah. you know, no real special discussions. It yeah. was just uh, siblings growing up in a uh, in a home, enjoying meals when they had the meals on the table. Where did you fall in the lineup? I was the second eldest. Okay. So have you have some brother. responsibility then? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Uh, my eldest brother, actually, we when we moved to Regina, he actually stayed in Regina. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's gone on to be a very successful uh, businessman. Um, and uh, I decided to enter politics at a fairly young age. Right. Uh, it was actually Trudeau that got me back in in 1968. Right. Which really kind of dates me. But uh, Okay, then I, I, sorry, I have to ask, yeah. how, how old were you then? in that first political I was actually interest. six turning seven yeah. and people say well wh how do you kind of tune into that mm -hmm. and it's because there was the uh, Trudeau mania that mm -hmm. was going on and there seemed to be some fascination from uh, my parents uh, right. and my grandparents on the issue and they were listening to it on the on the radio yeah and uh, so that kind of clicked me that Trudeau was someone that was good or someone important at least people around me seemed to think that he was really good and then as the years continued on, um, he became somewhat of an underdog in Western Canada. <laughs> Not necessarily well-loved, per se. It was kind of a love-hate type of thing. Yes. And I was sympathetic to uh, the underdog. Right. And I always per perceived uh, in my earlier uh, growing up years as Trudeau was a bit of a, an underdog. And I think that's what kind of brought me to the party. I think that um, for children especially, uh, when you have an interest in politics at a really young age, it's almost as though there's a particular switch in some people, some kids, um, that uh, just flicks on at some point in their early early childhood and shows them to have this really profound interest in, in politics. And it tends to stay that way for the rest of their lives. Some people come to politics later, but some people from the very earliest age are very interested in um, in politics, and you seem to be of that uh, yeah. in that category. Well, there was a switch. Like for, for me, um, growing up, it was interesting and all this kind of stuff and uh, and so forth. But it was actually the the constitutional court mm. uh, with the Charter of Rights. You know, seeing the Queen and the Prime Minister and all this. That's when I actually made the decision that politics is. I want to be. I right. want to be a politician. Couldn't tell you how. Couldn't tell you, you know, how one becomes a nominated candidate or anything of that nature. All I know is that I was just caught in the spirit of the of the Constitution. Uh, and uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau sitting at the table with the Queen. That uh, was a memorable experience uh, for me uh, personally. And uh, why? Don't quite understand. All I know is that's when I made the decision. I want to be uh, a politician. Um, and uh, that's what I told my family such. And what did they say? Uh, well, there was differing responses. Right. You know, uh, you know my, my father thought initially that I should probably move to Ontario because <laughs> the chances of being successful, liberals get elected in Ontario more than they do in Manitoba, right. uh, that uh, his advice uh, was to maybe consider moving to Ontario. Did he mean it seriously or was uh, it in jest? Uh, no, he was actually serious because I, went, I was in the military before. When yes. I told him that I was leaving the military, in order now to uh, get involved in politics, his advice to me was that I should really consider not being in Winnipeg but going to Toronto. Okay. Uh, so he was worried about you. He wanted, he wanted, like every good father, you know, you want your yep. children to realize their dreams. Right. And uh, he knew how important politics and was for me, and he thought maybe I should be uh, going to Toronto. Yeah. Uh, but it's that sense of civic pride, you know, I, that I, I, I love my city and it's and it's worth worth the fight right. and uh, fortunately for me and a, a lot of wonderful good people it helped uh, make my dream come true so are most of your siblings still living in that area no no they're, so they're all, all, over all over western that's, canada that's too bad i was going to say that it would always be a helpful force in any political campaign to have uh, my siblings and their yes, families around yes uh, and and they have played a role yes. i've had you know i've gone through 10 elections uh, just not all federal elections, right. and I've had family be, you know, my head of signs, uh, campaign managers, right. raising money. Uh, but it's a relatively young family. As I say, I'm the second oldest, and yeah. it's always been my younger siblings uh, that have helped. 
but even my mother at times has come out to help. You rely on family. Family's important. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, what was your first job? Uh, selling cars with my father. Really? Yes. Huh. Tough. It's really tough. But you know, when you're 17, 18 sure. years old, how do you convince someone that yeah, this is going to be the car of your future? Absolutely. We want you to give up or surrender $15,000 or $20,000. Well, especially because at that age, you don't really have a sense of what, um, I mean, your, your life is really confined to the 17 years of knowledge that you have. Yeah. And you don't have a family yet. You don't have kids yet. You don't know. Um, you're trying to convince something to buy a car based or yeah. someone to buy a car based on um, uh, your very limited lack of knowledge of what their life is like. Oh, for sure. And, and that's why, you know, at the, at the end of the day, uh, I felt that it would be good for me to, to get involved in the, in the military. Right. Uh, I thought maybe getting that sort of experience, uh, get a different perspective. Uh, so I made application and fortunately was, uh, was accepted, which was a completely different, new adventure. Um, and what I found in the military is that it also helped feed uh, my political ambitions. How? Um, because many of uh, the officers that I was associated with loved talking politics. Did they? And again, I was posted out in Alberta. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the, they were more than happy to criticize the Liberal Party. So I was more than happy to defend uh, the Liberal Party. So it, uh, it worked out uh, quite, quite well uh, in that sense. You didn't want to stay in the military, though. Why not? Uh, because I couldn't get a posting to Winnipeg. Had oh. I gotten a posting uh, to Winnipeg, I likely would have stayed on a little longer. Uh, but when I was uh, in Edmonton, there was this new leader that we elected provincially in Manitoba. Her name was Sharon Carstairs. Uh, and she was at the time the first female. And I thought, well, that might be my opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's when I had put in for my honorable discharge. It was just after three years. Uh, then went to back to my home province, and uh, Sharon was more than happy because she was wanting to see candidates. Uh, she was more than happy to see me on as one of her uh, candidates. Uh, so th I first ran in actually 1986 uh, as one of Sharon's uh, candidates. You know, that's a really big um, risk, frankly. I mean, you took a risk. You were in a uh, a career uh, that would have given you some stability and that would have uh, provided an interesting life yeah. and you would have been doing good work. Yeah, you see, you're reminding me of my father. Oh. <laughs> that, those are the type of points that my father and made. And you at the really time. should have moved to Ontario. <laughs> and I would have moved to Ontario, you know. That's the only part that you were missing. Um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, uh, you know, you, when you have a passion for yeah. something, you really believe. And I believe in the Liberal Party. You really Party. felt that, though. I believe in the Liberal Party. I, I loved my, my, my community of, yeah. Win of Winnipeg, and I felt that that was the time. Um, that takes and, a lot of courage. Uh, uh, yes, but uh, you know, you, uh, you know, we all have dreams, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, fortunately for me, uh, a lot of them have come have come true uh, in regards to my political aspirations. And uh, but Sharon was absolutely fabulous. Remember, we came from a seat in, 19, in that particular election. It was actually 1986. Uh, is the one that I first ran. Mm -hmm. It was in 1988. It was the second time I ran, and that's the one that we won. But we went from one seat in 1986 to 20 seats in 1988. So I was a part of that uh, liberal crush. Right, right. <laughs> you know, red in, crush. In the, in the red crush in, in 1988. And that's really what it was the right time with the right leader. And, um, you know, I'm very, very grateful that I made the decision back then uh, and followed the dreams. What was it like for you the first time you ran? Did it match up to what your expectations of it oh. were? You know, I, I remember the actual win. The, the first time I ran is different, right? Mm. In 86 when I ran, yeah. I was the candidate the campaign manager, right. the guy that put up signs and did drops. I remember going to the right. University of Winnipeg and photocopying brochures type thing for a nickel. Um, having said that, that was an exciting experience. When I won in 88 for the first time, I was 26, year, 26 years old, you're, you're somewhat in awe. You know, here I am going into a legislature with all these superior, intelligent human beings. Do I call Sharon Carstairs Mrs. Carstairs? Right. Do I call her Sharon? Mm -hmm. And, you call uh, her ma'am. Uh, or or ma'am, <laughs> you know. And, and these are the type of thoughts that you have going across right. your, your mind. And uh, it was an eye-opener. You know, the, the legislature is not that much different than the real world. Right. You get different people with different abilities, 
Uh, it took a little while uh, to, to get my feet uh, well established, hopefully not too long. Uh, and uh, it was just a, it's a wonderful experience, uh, something in which, uh, you know, that I can recall so vividly because at that time I was quite nervous I was about ask the fact you that I won. I won. What do sure, I do? Sure. Then that's it, isn't it? I mean, you've got, you've had this dream mm -hmm. and then suddenly, wow, it's a you, reality. You realize it, absolutely. And I wondered if you were scared. Uh, going into it the, the very first time. You know, I remember, uh, many of the viewers might remember a gentleman by the name of Reg Alcock. Mm -hmm. uh, Reg Alcock was a, a huge man. Mm -hmm. And we're walking down the hall after Sharon's introduced her entire caucus from 1 to 20, introduced the whole caucus. Reg is this huge, big fellow. I was, like, that's right after the election, soaking wet. I was 115 pounds type of thing. So the two of us were walking down, and that somewhat made a little bit of a media splash, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the difference in, in the caucus. Uh, but you know, it's those type of things that you that you're very fond of in terms of memories. Not to mention all the things that we were able to do, like the Meech Lake, which constitutional debate was red hot at that time. Uh, so I learned a lot about uh, our country and, and the Constitution. Were you married at the time? I, I married my childhood sweetheart. Did uh, you? She was 15. I was 16. Not uh, when you married, though. No, 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 no. We waited, <laughs> we waited five years before that. We okay. were in the forces and yeah. so forth. Yes, uh, and we have two children. Uh, oh, well, was she in the two forces children. too? No, she wasn't. No, no. okay. Uh, we had uh, two uh, two children once we got into politics, yeah. uh, and they're now they're young adults. My daughter is uh, 20, and she now has, I have a two-bedroom apartment here in Ottawa, yes. so she stays there. And I have uh, my son, who's 23, who's married now, yeah. just recently got married. Oh, wow. And he lives in my basement. So oh. i got family in both ways. That's both coming world. and going. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. So tell me um, how your wife felt about your decision to run. She must have always known that you were going to. On oh, absolutely. Level. She yeah. knew when, when we met that uh, politics is what I, I dreamt about. And, uh, uh, yeah. Tell Kathy me, is wonderful. She's very good. You know how I asked about um, whether politics matched your own expectations? Yeah. What about hers? because she would have known that it was something you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, but what was it like for her when it actually became a reality? Have you talked like, about that? Yeah, I like to think that it was, uh, it became our dream. Right. And, she's still um, married to you, so that's oh, a yeah, good she's sign. Still, she's still married. Good sign. Absolutely. 20, <laughs> oh, well over 25 years now. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's, it's, in one sense it's surreal. Like, I won in a by-election, mm. and a lot of people didn't expect us to win uh, in, in the by-election. So, you know, we'll be walking in front of the House of Commons, and uh, it's kind of like, you know, you pinch me, you know, is this thing real type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew when I had left the forces that ultimately I wanted to make it to the Hill. And we knew what the odds were and, and so forth. So, you know, both of us, as we're walking in front of the Parliament Hill, uh, on, on several occasions, uh, we would just say, you know, it just doesn't feel uh, real. It's too mm -hmm. good to believe. It's a privilege. It really is an honor uh, to be a member of Parliament. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, Kathy shares in that credit. Uh, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Kathy. Um, and, of course, the many other supporters, you know, right. the people that put up those signs now yeah. for me, uh, that do the door knocking, that make the phone calls. There's so much involved in, in a federal election. And um, without them, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. I understand also that your daughter mm -hmm. is um, active, that she is Absolutely. the one who's been particularly interested in your political career. Mm -hmm. um, Cindy is a, is a wonderful young lady. And... Um, uh, hopefully someday she'll be a, a strong political figure in herself. It's up for her to, to make that determination. I know she has a passion uh, for uh, politics and mm -hmm. her faith. And uh, I think that you can accomplish a great deal uh, with strong principles. And uh, as, a, as a young lady, she's done exceptionally well. You know, when uh, we won in the by-election, she came to Ottawa with me. She wanted to be uh, on the hill to soak in the atmosphere. Right. She got her first job, I think, with Subway, working part-time, then oh, a candy store, uh, so that she could afford to be here. Huh. Um, and, uh, and then relatively recently, uh, she was hired on by a senator. Oh, uh, that so great? that gives her uh, a little bit more experience on the hill itself. Right, absolutely. That must be quite interesting for both of you. Do you go to work together in the morning? I see. She's actually got a better off than I oh. do because she's actually on the hill, right? <laughs> Mine's bigger, but she's got it on yeah. the hill, you know? Okay. Um, 
yes. So you know, when you want the nice. great food, you go see your daughter and uh, uh, no, we like McDonald's. Oh. She, she comes to Confederation Building. Okay. McDonald's is halfway down the block. Okay. Now, so. um, explain to me this abiding love of McDonald's because I understand yeah. that you meet your constituents yeah. every Saturday yeah. uh, from ten until two. Or is that two. correct? At a McDonald's. At a local McDonald's. Yeah. You know, people uh, people enjoy uh, seeing, I believe, their, their politicians um, and in an attempt to be, try to engage people in a wonder in a good environment. Mm -hmm. uh, for since I've virtually been elected back in 1988, I've always gone to the local McDonald's. Um, I made a commitment to maintain that even if I got elected as a member of parliament. Uh, so it's every Saturday from 10 to 2, uh, I'm at the local McDonald's. Uh, now, there are some Saturdays I will miss if I'm yeah. out of country, right, right. <laughs> but generally speaking, 95% of the time, every Saturday, 10 to 2, and we get quite a few different types of people that will come. It, you know, some people just want to wave to you just to say hi. Uh, others have serious immigration issues. Uh, sometimes it has nothing to do with politics. They're just having some personal problems, and they just want to get uh, my thoughts on, on it. It really varies. Uh, usually when I'll start at 10, uh, we'll have a few people already there waiting to speak. Uh, you can have deal with three people, uh, and I shouldn't say three, a dozen people on a Saturday to 40 people on a Saturday. Right. It really varies. A lot depends on when my last mailer goes out. So. Sure. It sounds like you're a community psychologist. I love people. Uh, I think life is all about relationships. And uh, wherever I can help, I'm always more than happy to help. Don't care too much about follow through too much, but, it's very time -consuming. <laughs> but I, I do enjoy uh, talking with, with people about yeah. whatever issue. It doesn't really matter. Right. Obviously. You want to talk about burnt up street lights? And I'll talk about that too. What's your favorite McDonald's meal? Uh, well, it, it varies. Recently, I'm on the quarter pounder with no cheese and extra onions. Okay. That's a good way to make the constituents run. Keep your conversation <laughs> short. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Yes, but I'm starting, you know, I'm becoming more fond of the chicken and okay. the chicken burger. But, uh, you know, between you and I and the viewers, yes. <laughs> um, quite often, uh, I'll go to, to Burger King. Okay. I do like their, their Whoppers, right? Um, having said that, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not the food that brings me there. It's the people. It's the people. But I do enjoy, I do enjoy, the, I do enjoy the food. That's and uh, I was talking to uh, one of your coworkers here about starting to drink a glass of red wine because I'm thinking of my cholesterol. Yes. You know, at some point, you know, we eat at McDonald's or Burger King six, seven times a week on average. So Is I, that how know, often you eat that? So I, so I do have to try oh to Oh, my too. gosh. Yeah. But it's okay. My yes, doctor's I think aware of it. I'm my sure aware any of it. doctor watching would and, say, yes, uh, if you're eating there six or seven days yeah, a week, yeah. that you should definitely add wine yeah. to that. And too. that's why she suggested I should at least try one glass of red wine. <laughs> I don't drink, so I figured, well, maybe, maybe it's worth a while. Great. I'll use that as my excuse, too. Well, and then uh, she was also saying that it might do something for my hair because I'm losing oh. hair on top. You know, but you never know. You know what? You I know. think we can all convince ourselves of why... Justification. Yes, why we're Absolutely. justified in having a glass of wine. I have permission from my wife, right? No, I'm kidding. But that's wow. Yeah. So, you know, you, you talked about how it had been a lifelong dream to get to the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about what it was like the night that you knew, um, the night of your election victory, your federal election victory. How did you feel that night? Huh. Um, you, you feel... You know, it, it's hard to, to, to describe it's, uh, because you feel good for yourself, mm -hmm. uh, but you also feel, uh, feel for the people that are, that are inside the room. Uh, and it can be very emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, you know, eyes start to swell up and tears, uh, people jumping and screaming and, and so forth. Because it's not just my name's the one that's on the ballot, and I'm so grateful because it's my my dream. Uh, but uh, I'm always taken aback uh, by the people that are involved in the campaign and how their emotions are, are carried over and the impact it has uh, on me. Uh, is that it makes me want to do better. Uh, we we do a lot of communication. Um, and, uh, you know, I go out and I'll knock on doors between the elections. I'll uh, just go and meet with people, go to different weird events, good events, you want whatever type of event, because I know that uh, not only does it make me feel good, but it brings smiles on other people's face. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also represents all your constituents, doesn't it? I mean, when uh, you do that, especially if you're in a more rural or urban, you're in a more urban setting. Yeah. So you have a whole 
um, diverse range of constituents. Oh, very much so. It's a very, it's a very hard working class. Uh, Winnipeg North is a traditional working class uh, area. Uh, you know, there's very few that would make 150, whatever it is that I make a year. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, these, these are people that uh, you know, work long hours uh, for reasonable wages. Um, and uh, I think that they, they appreciate if you take the extra effort just to come out and say hi, right. you know, uh, and they tend to, to respond well to it. Your mom, um, your mom is still living. Mm -hmm. Your dad is not, He's is that right? Yes. Did he pass away recently? In 99. Okay. Right, yeah. Do you ever think about how he would feel knowing that you didn't have to move to Ontario? <laughs> Well, we well, you know what we we get we had to ex we got to experience that because I got elected to the Manitoba yeah. legislature. Uh, but there's so federally too. I my mean, my father was my number one supporter. Right. There was no one that supported me, uh, with the possible exception of my wife. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, my my father uh, got to really enjoy uh, participating in my career. He followed it, um, and you know, every every child wants to be able to have that support. From, from their father, you know, right. the feeling of, you know, that I've done good, that my, my parents, you know, uh, know uh, and feel good about me. And uh, my father played a very important role, even though it wasn't as long as I would have liked. And I'm sure uh, and feel confident that he would have felt uh, uh, pretty good about the, the election wins that brought me to Ottawa. Now let's talk about Ottawa. Yeah. Uh, what are your favorite things to do here? Do you actually do you have time to go out and enjoy the city itself, or is it really a, a long day work schedule that you have? Uh, I I love the chamber. But what I like the most is the House of Commons, mm. being sitting inside the chamber. Uh, that's what I did in the Manitoba Legislature. Uh, I believe that uh, as an elected official, my primary responsibility is to be physically present inside the chamber. Um, when I'm afforded the opportunity to speak, I will speak. Um, generally, not short on on words, uh, um, and um, you'll find that I'm probably within the top percentage in terms of people standing up, voicing ideas, thoughts, concerns, and and so forth. I made a commitment to my constituents that I would be heard in Ottawa. The best way to be heard in Ottawa is to be physically present inside the chamber, and it's the same principle that I took when I was at the, as an MLA for many years. Uh, and that is that uh, you're there to represent people. Uh, so I happen to enjoy it. Right. Uh, I don't get bored sitting inside inside the chamber. Um, so that's number one. The second thing is in Ottawa there's a lot more structure. So I know that I'm done. You know, at, you start at X time, you're done at X time, and then I can uh, go home and my wife right. and I can uh, uh, just relax. Right. Uh, is she here there's with good you? Chicken then? wings. Uh, she tries to. Uh, there's. Uh, she tries to be here as much as she can. Okay. She, we do have uh, some flexibility in that uh, she's not working. Yeah. Uh, so uh, she stopped working at Safeway when I won the by-election because we knew it was going to take a great effort and uh, uh, to be able to keep the seat. And so she is my greatest volunteer. She probably puts in at least 30, 30 to 40 hours a week uh, towards uh, my re-election, hmm. our re-election. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, what's on your bedside table? Do you read it all? Do you have an, a new, uh, uh, or is it nothing. like Hansard? It's not Hansard. <laughs> <laughs> I have more of a life than just Hansard, you know. But um, no, it's, it, there is there is nothing. I don't I don't even have a night table. Um, you know, I go to the bedroom to to sleep. Uh, I'll often put on something that'll put me to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, can't, uh, what, again, I don't know the name of the movie, but I've watched it about 45 times. Uh, it's about uh, Kennedy, the, you know, the, um, the the Cuban uh, missile crisis. Right. Um, so I can. So even your 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 movie interests have a political event. Uh, to, yes. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. I I, I love. You know, some element of truth to what it is that I'm watching. But uh, once you've watched the show 20 times or 30 times, uh, it helps me fall asleep. Excellent. So um, that's, I don't have a, a book that I read per se. I'm so glad that you took the time to be here today to chat with us about your interest in politics and your life outside of it. It's been a, a real pleasure. Well, thank you for the opportunity, Catherine. It's been a pleasure to be able to sit and have a chat with you. Thank you. You're welcome.